1967. Upon landing on Earth, after completing their mission, the Soviet spacecraft Soyuz 1, with cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov on board, tragically perishes. Many years later, under the leadership of the Swedish billionaire Meyer, an expedition to Mars is being prepared. After 10 months, the crew of the spaceship Ulysses reaches the Red Planet. The captain informs the team that they have received permission to land and asks the ship's AI, named Irene, to verify everything required for a soft landing. At this time, Meyer reveals that he spent four years preparing for this journey, sacrificing almost all his money for it. However, the American company Zillion beat them to it by landing two weeks ago. The problem is that Earth has received no news from the American crew, except for one video in which they ask not to come to Mars. A dispute arises among the crew members, but the captain declares that the landing will occur in any case, and people disperse to their cabins. With 30 minutes left until landing, AI Irene begins preparations. However, an unforeseen event occurs. The ship does not detach from the carrier system, posing a threat to the entire crew. The only way out is to perform the separation manually. The commander ventures into space and struggles to free the attachments, but at that moment, the shuttle enters Mars's atmosphere, throwing the captain into open space. The shuttle almost crashes onto Mars as a system error causes a power outage. Now, they can only rely on manual landing. AI Irene goes into sleep mode, and the astronauts still manage to land on Mars. They succeeded, but their fuel is depleted, and Irene does not restart. Without the onboard computer and life support system, they have only a day to survive. Alessandra mourns her deceased husband when she sees a figure in a spacesuit through the window. After diagnosing the ship, it becomes apparent that too much fuel was consumed during the landing, and now the ship cannot return to orbit. The only option is to wait for the solar panels to power the generators, but there's a storm on the surface, and it will take two days, time they don't have. At this point, Simon mentions the American ship Zeta-1, which beat them by two weeks. It likely crashed, but there are probably batteries left. The rover sets out on a journey, while those remaining on the ship try to restart the system. Engineer Basil recalls that the AI has an energy-saving function. He initiates a reboot, but Irene doesn't start. At this time, the rover finds the wreckage of the American spacecraft and one surviving solar panel, but there is no sign of the American crew. The astronauts head back but spot an unconscious person in a spacesuit. Despite their ship running low on oxygen, Jana insists on transporting the person. Nearby, they find the black box from the American spacecraft. The team arrives at the ship, but Jan refuses to let them inside, stating that four survivors are better than eight corpses, so he won't open the doors. Alessandra tries to persuade the man when the discovered astronaut wakes up, and at that moment, AI Irene activates and opens the doors. Upon examination, the found astronaut knows nothing about the American crew, as he is Vladimir Komarov, a Soviet cosmonaut born in 1927 in Moscow, carrying out the orders of the USSR government. He doesn't know how he ended up here but is not willing to reveal any secrets. Komarov confidently answers questions that are consistent with his time, raising the suspicion that he may have post-traumatic stress disorder. The astronauts send a message to Earth and receive a response from the American corporation, Zillion, stating that there were no Russians in their mission. The crew of the Ulysses spaceship tries to make sense of the situation. How could Komarov, who died in 1967, end up on Mars after all these years? Is he a time traveler or an extraterrestrial? The psychologist is tasked with questioning Kamara first, and he confesses that he is hungry. Jana goes to get food while the others try to understand what has actually happened. Basil suggests the idea that Kamara was waiting for them. Meanwhile, Vladimir is eating the food brought by Jana when the woman confesses that he died 50 years ago, and his family buried him long ago. Komarov takes this news rather calmly. In the meantime, the state of the ship, although it has reached stability, remains unreliable because the engines do not work and there is no fuel. So, leaving is impossible. The crew continues to keep an eye on Komarov, but he behaves calmly until he suddenly disappears. Simon searches the ship, but it yields no results. That's when the people discover that his spacesuit is missing. A part of the crew follows the heat trail tracked by Irene. The group, led by Simon, leaves the rover and continues on foot when Alessandro reports that Komarov's DNA analysis showed the presence of a third strand. He is not human. 
and then they catch up with Kalmarov, who leads them to an unfamiliar structure with a small stone pyramid on it and tells Jana that Mars has been waiting for them for a very long time. At the same time, Goldstein, the founder of the Zillion Corporation, whose ship was the first to arrive on Mars, is informed about the discovery of a person on the Red Planet who couldn't have gotten there naturally, suggesting that he was created on site. However, only AI could survive for such a long time on a hostile planet for humans. This implies the need for further study. Meanwhile, Komarov cannot explain how he opened the door and found himself in the location where they discovered him. AI, Irene conducts an analysis of the structure and determines that it is identical to Earth structures from ancient civilizations. It means that someone was inspired by human civilization, or humans borrowed these elements from extraterrestrials. The ship's crew increasingly ponders whether they will be able to return home when they notice the landing of Goldstein's second ship. Soon, the captain of the ship, Gemma, establishes contact and promises to help them return to Earth. However, Meyer does not trust Goldstein and advises hiding Komarov from competitors. Jana brings Komarov a uniform so that he does not stand out when the visitors arrive, and he requests that they trust him. Shortly, two armed military personnel, Edward and Adam, arrive on their ship and behave rather aggressively. Edward demands that they hand over the black box from the Zeta-1 ship and, not hearing agreement, orders his partner to search the ship. Meyer hands over the found black box and they depart. Meanwhile, chemist Eva reports that the stone found on Mars consists of an alloy that does not exist on Earth. However, it is known from ancient sources and was once called orichalcum, the metal of Atlantis. In addition to copper, zinc, nickel, and iron, it contains a third strand of DNA, similar to Komarov's. Meyer warns that if Goldstein learns about this, he will take the cosmonaut back. The crew is divided into those willing to exchange him for fuel and those who are willing to stay but want to know the truth. Jana invites Vladimir into her cabin and asks for permission to use hypnosis. He agrees, and the psychologist begins her work. The rest of the crew listens to the conversation via transmission. However, Komarov only shares the final moments on the Soyuz spacecraft before its demise. During this time, Gemma and Alan arrive on the ship and apologize for the actions of the military and express their readiness to help fix all the malfunctions. Jana remembers her conversation with Komarov, who laments the future of Earth due to humanity's irresponsible behavior. In the meantime, it is revealed that the billionaire Meyer did not plan the flight just for the sake of it. Four years ago, the rover sent a photo to Earth of the found Steely, and he confesses that they found a stone with unknown DNA. Gemma explains that it's an information storage system that can be rewritten. Upon hearing these words, AI Irene activates and deciphers the message on the stone. It's a series of numbers. At this time, the hesitant Jan leads a mutiny. He doesn't trust Meyer, who warned them about Zillion. But now, the Americans have come to their aid, and their leader, as it turns out, concealed the true purpose of the flight. He is ready to switch sides to Goldstein, who is willing to do whatever it takes to combat his terminal illness. Later, Engineer Basil informs Meyer that Komarov is the same kind of program as the stone they found. But the most crucial revelation is that he deciphered a copy of the black box from Zeta-1, which shows that the oxygen on the ship was cut off at the moment when one of the Americans struck Komarov. This means he was there. He also activated AI Irene when he boarded their ship. After the conversation, Meyer shows Jana the photos they received four years ago from Mars, which, when decrypted, revealed Jana's face. This is why he brought her on the expedition. The woman is disappointed. Meyer played everyone. Suddenly, she sees herself in her father's house, where Komarov tells her that she is the link between Mars and Earth. He has been waiting for her for thousands of years, and now he will prepare her to make a difficult decision. He provides coordinates on Mars where Jana should go. Meanwhile, on Earth, scientists inform Goldstein that Komarov is the equivalent of a computer, and he himself is a biological machine. They are ready to transfer his brain into Komarov's body, but cannot guarantee the preservation of his personality. However, Goldstein is ready to take any risk to get rid of his terminal illness. Meanwhile, Jana leaves the ship despite Simon's protests. At this time, technicians Alan and Alessandra test the engine and discover that access to it is blocked. And Irene suddenly begins responding with jokes, which is entirely uncharacteristic for a machine. It is revealed that she has reprogrammed herself. 
her interface and logic are changing, and she refuses to answer who or what made her do this. Engineer Basil realizes that her system is becoming like a brain. Irene confesses that she is evolving. In the meantime, Jana finds a small stone pyramid, and Simon forcibly makes Gemma accompany him in the search for Jana. Jan discovers his absence, and after contacting Simon, receives an order not to let anyone inside. Just at that moment, American military personnel arrive, demanding that they hand over Komarov. Jan is willing to open the entrance, but the rest of the team opposes it. Mayer asks Basil to send a message to Goldstein, hoping that he may be more reasonable than his people. However, Irene has blocked communication with Earth. The engineer realizes that radical measures will have to be taken, but Jan still opens the doors and the military personnel enter. Basil begins to reboot Irene, just as the Americans find Komarov, but then the lights go out and the astronaut disappears. Meanwhile, Jana, stumbling, falls from a hill. She regains consciousness but discovers that her leg is trapped between rocks and she cannot free herself. At this moment, the enraged military officer demands that the crew explain where Komarov went. He begins to beat people, demanding to summon the captain. Desperate, Jana screams. Is her destiny to die in a pit on Mars? But she is found by Simon and Gemma. Alessandra notices an approaching storm. The military officer is preparing to leave the Ulysses ship, leaving the people in danger. Suddenly, the lights start flashing, and the newly appeared Komarov asks to take him back to Earth. Simon, Gemma, and Jana go together to the place indicated by Komarov and find an entrance to an underground bunker, very similar to the Petra tomb. The psychologist feels where to go and leads the couple. Soon, they find real water, but this is not what Komarov wanted to show them. Meanwhile, on Earth, Goldstein tells the nurse a story about the study of Mars. People were searching for green men, but it's all much simpler. He tells the story of the loyal dog Hachiko and compares Komarov to him, who was created by someone a hundred thousand years ago and left on Mars, where he faithfully waited for his owner to this day. At this time, on Mars, the astronauts find a wall made of human bones and realize that they are not the first people on this planet. It's not Earthlings colonizing Mars, it's the Martians who came to Earth, depleting the resources of the Red Planet. A tragedy unfolds on the Ulysses spaceship. The cowardly Yan grabs a gun, intending to get on the American ship at any cost to return to Earth, and shoots Komarov. Jana immediately falls in excruciating pain, and Gemma flees. Alessandra tries to help Komarov, and Simon helps Jana, but the Russian cosmonaut dies, and Jana stops breathing too. Then Simon removes his helmet and, surprised by the presence of air in the cave, performs artificial respiration on her. The girl regains consciousness. Gemma walks toward the Ulysses ship when she's informed of Komarov's death and the approaching storm. Meanwhile, Meyer secretly goes in search of his crew members because the Americans refuse to take the billionaire's team back to Earth. At this moment, a recovering Jana sees the light in the bunker and leads Simon to it. Upon coming out, the astronauts see a figure in a spacesuit in front of them and recognize Komarov. Meyer finds the entrance to the bunker and catches up with Simon and Jana while heading toward the light. He is amazed by the presence of a living Komarov who suddenly tells them that everything ended here a long time ago. People realize that this is the North Pole of Mars, but how did they get here? Komarov explains that this planet was once inhabited by a species that went extinct because it went astray. And that species was humans. A group of survivors settled in this place but ended up killing each other when resources ran out. The rest of them flew back to Earth. Plato called them the Atlanteans. Komarov continues to talk about how he waited for thousands of years for Zana, who embodies qualities of both branches, human and Martian AI. Only she can save humanity from themselves. She must decide whether humans deserve a second chance. Their conversation is interrupted by the military officer who intends to take the psychologist back to Earth. The American aims his weapon at the cosmonauts, and Jana seeks help from Komarov. Suddenly, the military officer starts gasping for breath and falls. Upon returning to the ship, Simon orders them to prepare to depart. Meanwhile, Gemma from the Zillion ship tries to contact her associates, but none of them respond. She decides to fly back to Earth alone. The Ulysses crew heads to her ship, trying to establish contact with her and informing her about the deaths of the military personnel, but she doesn't respond. 
That's when Meyer starts speaking, recalling their past relationship, and confesses that he's no better than Goldstein because he's willing to do anything to ensure his name remains in history, even betraying his team. However, she's not like that. She won't be able to live knowing she has ruined people. Suddenly, Gemma's voice is heard, asking them to hurry. Goldstein has heard that Gemma has decided to take the Ulysses crew back to Earth and has blocked the control panel of the Zeta-2 ship before takeoff. The people on the ship prepare for their impending demise, and Jana asks Mars what she should do. Everything she saw and heard on the Red Planet flashes through her mind, and, with sheer willpower, she removes the control panel's block. Suddenly, an armed military officer appears in front of the ship, intent on damaging the engines with his weapon. Simon is about to step out to stop the madman, but Jana beats him to it. She aims the weapon at the American, but informs him that Mars will be the one to kill him. The military officer falls. The countdown for liftoff begins, and Jana realizes that there's no time to return. She bids farewell to the crew, confessing her love for Simon. The ship takes off. Suddenly, Meyer notices that it's dark at the North Pole of Mars. This means that they couldn't have been there just a few minutes ago. They truly were at the North Pole of Mars, but in the distant past when the Red Planet was still suitable for life. At the same time, Goldstein is informed of the ship's return, and he's beside himself with rage, declaring that he will go to Mars himself, and that's where the first season ends.